Hi, I'm Josh, and what you probably know about me is that I buy and review a lot of laptops. But what you may not know is that I have two degrees in computer science, specifically programming. I have programmed professionally for over 15 years at a variety of companies, including cutting edge startups and major corporations such as IBM. I've coded small systems through to massively concurrent cloud-based systems. I have received so many requests for this guide. Well, this is it my ultimate guide of exactly what you should be looking for in a laptop for a software developer. And of course, just watch it if you are generally interested. I'll be demystifying a bunch of software development things you see in TV shows and movies. The way I'm going to do this guide is to first talk about what programmers should look for when picking a laptop, including what they should be careful of. Then I'm going to wrap up by suggesting several laptops that are ideal at a variety of price points. This guide is going to be super thorough and enough for the vast majority of software developers, but software development can be extremely specialized. You may have very specific needs that require certain hardware. For example, you need a laptop with ridiculous amounts of RAM because you plan to develop advanced Monte Carlo simulations on large data sets, which for performance purposes you need to keep in memory. You will certainly know if you require such specialized hardware. If you don't know, you likely don't need it. Before we hop into this guide, take a moment to click that subscribe button, the thumbs up and the notification bell. Videos like this take a long time to make and although I enjoy helping you out, it definitely shows your appreciation for the effort that goes into them. Are you ready? Let's go. Firstly, the most important things for a coding laptop are a great display and a comfortable keyboard, as you will be staring at tiny code all day and typing for hours on end. For the display, you want a crystal clear, bright display that shows the most amount of code possible without needing to squint. You'll often see coders working with external monitors turned vertically. As a coder, you frequently debug issues, which means you jump from one line of code to another to fix a problem. You want to avoid scrolling and clicking as much as possible to do this, as time is money. So the more amount of code you see on the screen, the better. Look for a high resolution display like a Retina or a 4K panel. The higher fidelity of these panels will make it easier to see code in small fonts and allow you to see more on the same size display. Also, Pay close attention to the aspect ratio. Displays with aspect ratios like 3 by 2 in the Surface lineup, or even those with 16 by 10 like Apple's range will allow you to see more code than the standard 16 by 9 that most Netflix viewers or content creators prefer. Also, an interesting note, Apple's Mac OS and its included fonts by default allows you to comfortably see more lines of code than on a similar size screen on Windows. Take a look at this comparison. My MacBook Pro 16, which has 8.5 inches of vertical screen height, after setting it to more space in the display settings, shows 86 lines of code. My Aero 17 inch screen also has 8.5 inches of vertical screen height. After setting it to 175% display scaling in Windows to show the most amount of code, it shows only 64 lines of code. My Surface Book 215 with 8.3 inches of vertical screen height after setting it also to 175% scaling shows only 73 lines of code. This confirms my hypothesis that out of the box with pre-installed fonts, the displays on Mac OS are better for coding than Windows on similar size displays. The keyboard is extremely important. You want it to be very comfortable for long sessions of typing. This means deep travel. I'd look for something with a minimum of 1.3 millimeters of key travel. Even the new MacBook Pro 16s only have one millimeter of travel, which isn't as comfortable as I'd like. That being said, whether you like a keyboard is very subjective. Go to a store to try out the keyboard, open a text document and try typing up a couple of paragraphs. Be very careful of unusual keyboard layouts like that of Razer's. These keyboards may result in a lot of frustration when trying to get work done fast. Also, programmers use integrated development environments like IntelliJ here or PHP Storm. These frequently use the escape and function keys for important tasks. Most laptops now set the function keys to their secondary function, like volume up and down. You may want to try to find a laptop where you can switch the function keys back, also called function locking. For example, the Lenovo ThinkPad line allows you to do this. You may want to avoid Apple's touch bar equipped laptops as using the function keys on these is an uncomfortable experience. But you can generally remap the keys from function to other key combinations. So this isn't the end of the world. 
Lastly, ensure the keyboard is backlit if you plan to use it at night. An amazing trackpad is a nice to have for most coders. It's very common though for coders to carry an extremely accurate mouse around with them. Coders need to make the most of their time and if a top mouse performs better than even the best trackpad, it's better to bring a mouse. That being said, if you don't want to carry a mouse, ensure you get a laptop with a top trackpad like one from the Surface or MacBook Pro range. If you are a software dev and you are purchasing a laptop rather than a desktop, there is probably a portability reason for it. Like you are a student coder using the laptop in the library, or a gig economy worker coding in a coffee store, or you're working in an open plan corporate environment. You want a laptop that is going to be portable, lightweight with strong battery life. Coders are frequently on the go. The lighter weight the laptop, the better. Anything greater than 4.5 pounds is going to feel heavy in your backpack. Also, I'd strongly advise you to look for a laptop that charges via USB-C. These chargers are far lighter weight than chargers used in gaming laptops. Plus, they are cheaper. So you can buy a couple to have at work and home, which means you may not have to carry the charger with you. One thing that may not be as much of an issue for coders as it is for other users is fan noise. Coders frequently work in loud environments with headphones on. So think about where you're going to be working as to whether fan noise needs to be a factor for preventing you from buying a laptop. Onto webcams. Coders generally use these as software development is normally very collaborative. You will likely be working with a team of software developers and other partners. You will probably be doing frequent video conferences. Having a webcam that stares up your nose or is extremely low quality will not be nice for other team members. Keep an eye out for this when shopping. CPU power. You want to have enough CPU power but not too much. Let me explain. Too much CPU power may result in your keyboard deck getting too warm to the touch and becoming uncomfortable, or the fans on your laptop being obnoxiously loud. But you don't want too little CPU power that you are waiting too long for code to run, as you want to avoid context switching. Context switching is where you are thinking through a complex coding problem, but because it takes too long for your laptop to run a test of the code, you switch to another application, like browsing the web while you wait. Then, when you remember that the test was complete, you have to refresh your memory on the specifics of what you were testing. This can really slow down your productivity. Also, keep in mind programming normally requires more burst CPU power rather than sustained, like video editing. A CPU like the i7-9750H with a low base clock but a high burst is the perfect balance. I'm not going to cover GPU performance here as it's more of a specialized case. Let's talk about operating systems. You may hear coders say that they want to run Linux or Mac OS over Windows. If you don't know what this is all about, other than just a personal preference, let me demystify it. The reason I run Fedora Linux on one of my laptops is that the software I'm creating will eventually be deployed onto remote servers, often sitting in the cloud like AWS, Amazon Web Services. It won't spend its life running on my laptop. These remote services often run Linux. In my case, a version of Linux based on Red Hat called CentOS. To ensure the code runs as expected, it helps to run the same or a very similar operating system on the laptop you are developing the code on. As different operating systems work in different ways, it's easier to have the same operating system on your laptop as the servers you are coding for. That means you don't have to constantly think, I need to do something like install software this way on one machine versus another way on my servers. If you want to run Linux on your machine, search the web to ensure your machine is compatible with that variant of Linux. If you can't find information on your particular machine and you live in a location where you have access to free returns, buy the laptop, try Linux, and if it doesn't work, return it. If you are planning to develop native apps for iOS or iPad, then you'll want a MacBook, as Xcode, the language for developing these, only runs on macOS. RAM. You are going to want a minimum of 8GB of RAM, but I'd recommend 16. Think about it like this. A normal user runs a bunch of programs on their machine, and 8GB of RAM is fine with little slowdown. A coder, though, is going to run all of those normal programs plus many additional ones. For example, they will run an integrated development environment like the one I have here. Look how much RAM it is using. They will then run the applications they are developing itself, which also uses additional RAM. The moral of the story is this. Coders need more RAM than normal users. Please note that yes, modern operating systems do make excellent use of less RAM by compressing data in memory and using fast SSDs to swap to, but it's still better to avoid this and just go for 16GB of RAM or higher. 
Storage. For most coders, 512 gigs should be fine. If you know what kind of work you'll be doing, try to find out what data you'll be working with. Test data can be very big and you'll want to ensure you can fit it in your laptop's drive, or you'll have to carry an external drive everywhere you want to code, which can be annoying. Anything else that I haven't discussed here, I personally don't believe is key for a programmer. Okay, let's get into the laptops I'd recommend. And please note, no laptop is perfect. The MacBook Pro 16 meets almost 100% of the needs discussed in this guide, other than the keyboard, which is a slight miss. The keyboard is a little uncomfortable with travel being a bit short, but if you can afford it, get it. It's my number one pick. Tying for second, the Lenovo X1 Extreme Gen 2. Better keyboard than the MacBook Pro and lighter in weight, but the screen is a 16 by nine layout, smaller than the MacBook Pros, and as mentioned, Windows generally shows less lines of code. So that's a negative. Plus the MacBook Pro's battery is bigger. That being said, it's still a quality, powerful computer with a good 4K screen. Also tying for second, the Surface Book 215. Better keyboard than the MacBook Pro, similar weight. It has the three x two aspect ratio of the screen, so you'll see a decent amount of code. The CPU is behind the screen, so the keyboard deck will not get hot when under load, which makes it a super comfortable laptop to use. That being said, the laptop has been around for two years and the processing power of this laptop is not as strong as I'd like. It still though, is good enough for most development tasks. Third, the Aero 17. Great screen, comfortable keyboard, powerful components. Very small and light for a 17 inch laptop. This is a good coding laptop if you only need a little bit of portability. I wouldn't recommend this though if you are traveling with a laptop each day. It doesn't support USB-C charging, so you'll have to carry a heavy power brick. Fourth, the Dell XPS 15. This laptop is pretty good, but to be honest, its chassis hasn't been updated in many years. It's a bit heavy and bulky for what it is by today's standards, although it is very well made. Fifth, the HP Spectre X360 15 inch. Decent amount of power, very comfortable keyboard, okay screen, although it's a little dimmer than its competitors. It's also heavier than some of the other laptops I mentioned. Sixth, the Lenovo C940, probably the most portable laptop I've recommended, get the 4K version as it will be easier to see code. The only negative here is the performance isn't phenomenal. Lenovo tends to throttle the CPU to keep the heat and fan noise in check, which isn't a bad thing. So if you are doing lightweight coding, this is a good option. Seventh, the Lenovo X1 Carbon. Great keyboard with a 14 inch screen. Spring for the 4K model, as again, you'll be able to make out more code on it. Battery life though, isn't great. Notice that I haven't recommended any 13 inch laptops. I personally think 13 inch screens are too small for coders to use as their primary device, with one exception, my eighth pick, the MacBook Pro 13. As mentioned, Apple screens show more code for the same size screen. These machines are also pretty powerful for what they are. The major downside though is the butterfly keyboard. Now, if you can't afford any of the above laptops, the first thing I'd recommend is looking for a prior years model of one of these or an open box or outlet model. If you can't find one, then you'll have to sacrifice something. I would consider sacrificing the 4K screen and going for a 1080 screen. Many laptops now have excellent 1080 screen options, like the ones on the Lenovo X1 Carbon range. If you can handle looking at small code on that kind of monitor, you will be able to purchase the 1080 variants of some of the laptops I mentioned much cheaper. For example, the Dell XPS 15 with the 9300H model CPU with the 1080 screen is still a surprisingly capable computer and substantially cheaper than the 4K version with the six core CPU. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up and the notification bell. If you have comments or questions, leave them down below or join the Discord chat. Heck, this video was made because viewers asked for it, so I definitely am reading your comments. Till next time, I'll catch you later.